Tim Albright with AV Nation previewing AV3, the virtual event we're doing with Avixa and our friends over at SCN and AV Network. Uh, June 17th, you can join us and hang out for the day between 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 or 7 o'clock at night because we've got a happy hour at the very end. Uh, I'm going to be ma- moderating a panel on the future of education. And with me today to talk about his involvement is Andrew Kornstein from Sennheiser. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Sennheiser is one of our our fantastic sponsors. You can visit them. You can go to the virtual show floor uh, on June 17th. Um, You can also listen to to Andrew on on our panel. Um, Andrew, one of the things uh, I want to talk to you about, though, is is what you're seeing kind of in in the realm of of audio and and what customers are asking for, right? You know, IT managers, tech managers, and and the folks that they support. What's one of the biggest areas of, of change or evolution that you're seeing in the audio space today? Right. So when we're, you know, obviously in these times of uh, teleconferencing, distance learning, uh, distance working, anything like that is uh, becoming more and more important, more than it ever has. And I think one of the needs that uh, people are realizing um, that that's out there and maybe it wasn't like this just a couple of years ago is really the need for better audio. Um, Video has almost taken a backseat. Uh, to, <laughs> to, to the needs because I think people are starting to realize that if you can't hear something, you've lost so much content uh, from, from a class or a meeting that you're trying to, uh, to join remotely. Um, if a video glitches, it's fine. If, if you lose a couple of words, you can actually lose an entire message. Um, so we're seeing, um, we're seeing a big demand uh, for the audio side of things to, to really get improved. One of the things that came out of the the pandemic was was touchless everything, right? You walk through uh, mm-hmm. and, and get scanned and stuff like that. You, you and you do all this without touching. Obviously, restaurants moved to more about to the QR code. Code. Um, yeah. What are you seeing as far as you know, touchless audio uh, coming down the pipeline? So, some of our customers are really exploring um, different different ways to rethink the way that audio capture is done. And we are seeing a little bit of a migration or an evolution away from the traditional uh, microphone systems. Um, There's obviously wireless microphones and gooseneck microphones and boundary microphones and and these sort of things. This is still a viable product and always will be. But um, a lot of our customers are starting to think of, okay, well, what else is out there? And this is where some beamforming ceiling mic technology can really come in. Um, which, which is just a technology that just follows the loudest voice in a room within a 30-foot diameter. Uh, so if somebody on this side of the room is talking and they're within the, um, the, the range of influence of the microphone, then it's going to pick them up very well. So you have flexible spaces where sometimes you might have to have uh, some participants of a meeting or a classroom several feet apart for, for distancing. Um, uh, Maybe it's classroom style one day, maybe it's U-shaped table the next day, and we really need uh, the ability for one microphone to cover a lot of those different scenarios based on the demands of that particular day, of that particular room. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew, another thing that came out of of last year was a plethora of soft codecs. Um, Not that we needed more, but uh, one of the most recent um, reports I read said that there was somewhere in the neighborhood of 250, 260 soft codex available overall right and obviously we we know the the more, more popular ones um when you guys look at you know making sure that, that you guys fit into an ecosystem where that ecosystem is is a software codec one or a control system or, or working with existing dsps what are you guys finding um the, the clients are asking you uh when it comes to kind of fitting in and making sure that you work with with different and various ecosystems mm-hmm so a lot of the customers are coming to us and you know in many cases depending on the uh depending on who the customer is they could have invested millions of dollars in this particular make or model of this dsp or this make or model of this control system um but like i was saying before where um you know a lot of our customers have realized wow we need some improvements on the audio side maybe not the control side maybe not the video side uh, but but the audio capture side. Um, so we have millions invested in, uh, you know, brand X 
uh, DSPs, all right, well, we need a microphone that's going to work perfectly with that. And uh, th this is actually where, where we've seen a, a lot of traction, again, with our ceiling uh, micro or with our Team Connect ceiling microphone, also the the, um, the the ability to work with any existing control system. Uh, so sometimes you'll have Brand X DSP and Zoom, or uh, you know Brand Y DSP with Teams, uh, and and we have to have a solution that's going to work with every scenario that's uh, that's thrown at us. Absolutely. Andrew Kornstein from uh, Sennheiser, thank you so much. If somebody wants to connect with you or Sennheiser, how do they do that? Uh, yeah, so you can reach me anytime. Andrew at Sennheiser.com is my uh, email address. I'm uh, al always available. Uh, always happy to help any any way I can. All right, very good. Andrew Kornstein from Sennheiser. Again, you can you can hear Andrew some more uh, on uh, June seventeenth um, with our our AV3 event. You can go to AV3Event.com. AV3Event.com. Get yourself four point seven five CTS RUs. Hang out uh, with me and Megan Dutta and. Chuck Espinosa all day and some really smart people. So av3event.com. That's av3event.com. Mm -hmm.